Welcome to the HR Empowerment Podcast, where we will uncover strategies and new insights from HR professionals who discuss up-to-date regulations, best practices, and the most pressing topics like diversity and equity, leadership, dealing with difficult situations, and much more that affect your bottom line and business. Thanks for joining us. Hi, everybody. Wendy Sellers here, the HR lady. Today, we're going to be talking about how to keep complaints out of the HR department. So job descriptions, very important. And then the next step with the job descriptions is making sure the managers not only know the roles, but who the people are in each role. Sometimes we give employees other responsibilities outside the job description that they agreed to. And you know what? Hey, that's okay. But does the employee know that they're going to be held accountable for that? Is that just an additional responsibility for a couple weeks because somebody's out sick or is it a permanent responsibility? And then how are we going to, you know, review them, judge them, so to speak on that responsibility? Are they doing good? Or are they not? How are we going to give them feedback official or unofficial on that? That's count account. I called accountability. So we want to make sure the manager 100% explains to the employee, every one of their employees, what their job is, preferably with an actual written job description, how he or she or they are going to talk to that individual, when they're going to talk to that individual on a regular basis, and how we're going to record if they're doing good. Thumbs up, thumbs down, or you need some help and I'm here to help you. We need to make sure that's being followed through from hire all the way to exit. Not just once a year, it's too late. Once a year is irrelevant. It goes in one ear, out the other to everyone involved. And by that time, the time you even get to their review, they may have already gave you their resignation notice and they're out the door. Hiring to exit should actually be managed by the manager, not human resources. Sure, HR is going to help, right? HR is going to help make sure that the job advertisement looks great, is legally compliant, has the cultural aspects in the job ad, so even marketing might be helping with that. But the managers are going to be the ones that are going to be conducting the interviews and the selection process, even internal candidates. So they're still going to have to talk to them and interview them because there's a potential promotion coming. So managers need to know, well, how do I hold my employees accountable? What am I allowed to do? What am I not allowed to do at this organization? Osmosis doesn't work, people. We have to spell this out for managers and help them and guide them and coach them. And guess what? Once you do that, (laughs) it gets off your plate. It gets off the HR plate. It doesn't truly ever get off the HR plate because we're there to be the coach. We're going to be the advisors. We're going to help guide people. So we're always going to have one foot in the hiring through exit process, but it really should be a main responsibility of managers, senior managers, directors. HR is going to be there to handle everything else that fortunately or unfortunately does come up through or within the hiring through exit processes, the employee life cycle. So again, those laws, and believe it or not, in the past couple of years, laws, major laws have actually changed. And so HR needs to be on top of keeping an eye on when laws change and then train managers on those laws. And then in some cases, train employees as well. Of course, we have to be on top of compliance. So when our OSHA forms do, when our other uh, documentations do, such as things that go with the Affordable Care Act, if you are, if you um, are, if your company is applicable, such as things that go with the Affordable Care Act, if it applies to your organization, even COBRA, if you have health insurance, those are things that are going to be managed by human resources. I just call them compliance and legal concerns. And then often you're going to be a referee, so get your referee shirt ready. You're going to be a referee of conflict. But remember that you're there to coach and advise both the manager and the employee. But you're going to be the referee 
and make sure that these conversations are going smoothly and well and they're not breaking any laws and that there's actual purpose to them versus a shouting match. But rarely is HR going to be the one that is going to be resolving the conflict. Let me back up there. Rarely should HR be the one that is resolving the conflict. HR should be saying, manager, this is your responsibility. Let me give you some coaching. Let me give you some guidance on how to get through this conversation. Let's role play this before you go talk to the employee. Hopefully another manager, senior manager or director will be able to sit with that manager and that employee so that there's a witness, especially if it's a serious conversation, to get through that conversation. But some cases, in some instances, it's going to be HR. But just remember that you should really be the witness, not the one that's running, running the show and running the conversation. Because if you are, then guess what? That conflict, that complaint is right back in your court. Everyone's going to know that you're in charge. And for some of you listening today, you might be thinking, well, that's what I want. Okay, remember that a year from now when you're, you're crying and saying, I have no time to get everything else done. It might make you feel good. Maybe you're really good at conflict management. But in that, if that's the case, then maybe your role needs to morph a little bit because we need to make sure directors, senior managers, managers, all the way down to supervisors, and in some cases, depending on their, what their role really is, even team leads are dealing with conflict management because that is the biggest time suck for human resources. So how do managers practice conflict avoidance? They send problems to HR. Stop, don't let them do that. Train your managers. That means you need to go right now. Well, maybe you're done listening to this podcast. You need to go right after this podcast and say, what do I wish would stop coming to my desk? Okay, now you have that wish list. I'll give you a second to write that down. What do I wish would stop coming to my desk? How am I going to make that happen? I'll give you the answer. You're going to train managers. And now I'm just saying this, oh, yeah, we're just going to train managers. It doesn't happen overnight. Training managers, how to handle conflict, how to handle complaints, how to handle all those type of issues from gossip to productivity and behavior issues. It doesn't happen overnight. It takes a long time. We need to start now though. We need to start small and start now. Here's an idea. Why don't you put together a survey and survey your managers, your senior managers, your directors, and even your supervisors too survey them what do they want to be trained on now most of them are going to say i don't want to deal with any of this so you have to be careful how you word the survey right what i would prefer that you do is survey them to find out what their skills are and so that's going to be more than yes no questions that's going to be very uh, specific surveys and time intense surveys so that you can maybe develop even a quiz so that you can say, all right, now I've determined loosely what my managers know and what my managers don't know. Don't go this alone. There's a lot of resources out there. There's a lot of survey companies. I just use SurveyMonkey because I'm comfortable with that and I happen to have a subscription to that. There's a lot of things on SurveyMonkey that have already been developed that you can just reuse their surveys and they've figured it all out and it's all factual and compliant that you could just go ahead and use their surveys to determine what skills do we have and what skills are we lacking. Once you train people, this isn't gonna happen overnight, it's probably gonna take a year, if not more, but you have to start now, then you can feel more confident about redirecting your supervisors back to the problem, your managers back to the problem and saying, you guys handle this, you people handle this, and then let me know what I can do to support you. Thank you for joining the HR Empowerment Podcast, brought to you by Aurora Training Advantage. We hope you've gained new insight and strategies to navigate the HR profession. We look forward to you joining us again on the HR Empowerment Podcast.